Good been going on and on for hours. I think it's been an excellent conference. We could see in depth the case of Barcelona, but also um, examples from other parts of Spain and international examples, and we've learned a lot. I think also that we have had academic presentations, presentations from memory associations, and also institutional presentations in the case of Barcelona, represented by the archaeology department. So I would like to thank the organizers of this conference, uh, uh, thank uh, the Department of Archaeology, Archaeology, Pujadas, Karma Maese, and many other people. I would like to thank Eurom, Jordi Guiche, Karma Conesa, and the rest of the team. <coughs> Xavi was uh, in the opening of the conference and now uh, also in the final remarks. He, he has already made some connections. We have seen how the memory of shelters is linked to the memory of bombing. The first conference, the keynote uh, speech by Keith Lowe, focus on bombings, and we see that bombings combine physical elements, physical destruction, with psychological elements, the, the moral shock that we were mentioning now. Barcelona as a test ground for the Second World War, but we saw also other examples, such as the case of Hamburg, where there were 45,000 victims in one air bombing in 1943. And we can see how narrative, guilt, the losers, the winners, how memory around these cases is built, sometimes an uncomfortable memory, such as in the case of Italy. And many aspects were hidden, um, like in the case of Germany that establishes 1945 almost uh, as a zero uh, year or a, a new star. And uh, Ramon Arnavat was telling us this morning about Barcelona the physical aspect of bombings and shelters. Shelters were useful infrastructures because there were less victims thanks to shelters. And these places, shelters, are also important as resistant spaces in Barcelona. So the memory of these underground spaces links with the first round table about buried memory. Uh, and here we had uh, fear that uh, has or may disappear memory. And we know that in the case of Spain, and it's something that has been mentioned during this today. We have seen cases uh, of Berlin, the bunker where Hitler committed suicide, the case of Paris. In the next round table, we were talking about archaeology of uh, shelters and the challenges that shelters have faced to be studied. Very often, the lack of interest by uh, professionals, by archaeologists, or also the loss of collective memory. Anna was telling us uh, how she found 
found out uh, about uh, shelter when she was uh, waiting for her daughter um, to an uh, a basketball game and the teachers at that school didn't know about the shelter so we've seen the importance of this collective memory when talking about Gracia neighborhood we've heard about the importance of revisiting in a faithful way these spaces uh, to understand understand these spaces better. And when Gabriel Moshenska made his presentation, there was hope in the presentation, saying that this is a cross-cutting cross topic, this international element, the internationalization may give rise to a new solidarity and share interest to foster the research and give value to this kind of spaces. Jordi Ramos mentioned several cases in Spain, in Andalusia, and Miquel Mezquida um, talk about the case of the example of Valencia. And uh, today, uh, we also saw how the political contents can, context uh, or situation can impact the research, because while the popular party was in power in Valencia, research on this topic could not be done. From from Montserrat Pujadas and Xavier Maese from the Archaeology Service of Barcelona told us about tools at our disposal, the uh, shelters that were open, new ones, uh, the ones that will be opened in the future, and they talk about experiences. It's something that has appeared, that has been mentioned today too. We have in this room posters telling us about specific cases around Barcelona, Bilbao, London. And we had the opportunity yesterday to talk with some of the authors of the posters. Beyond architecture, today we have focus on how to remember bombings. Laia Gallego was talking about the body memory. Jordi Guichet was telling us about art practices around the war, the war and the memory in Barcelona and Agramun, public management. Cristina Lucas and Ricard Martinez, Martinez have presented projects that they carry out by introducing data and uh, having an ongoing work and explaining that uh, many people today suffer the effects of bombing or war or Ricard with uh, the photography and resignifying the collective memory by means of photography in Barcelona and uh, Granollers, among other places. The round table this afternoon, we've heard uh, examples of uh, constructions of collective memory. Jose Maria Contel has explained how progressively there was a um, demand by population to uh, recuperate these spaces. Uh, um, he was talking about an ephemeral uh, construction during the war, but that memory lasts. Pepe Pascual has 
told us about these spaces in Valencia, some of these spaces were leisure spaces uh, up until quite recently. It was uh, something surprising. And from Germany, we've heard in the case of the Feuerle collection how to change space, how to turn a bunker into an art center. Uh, and we have also seen in the case of Berlin how in a city that is rebuilding and redefining in, with the process of demilitarization of Germany, many bunkers have disappeared. We've heard about the dangers these spaces have to face in order to survive. And uh, finally, we've had the last presentation on March the 30th, the exhibition will open. As you could hear, it will be fantastic. A catalog will be published. You will find it uh, here and in bookstores. So, Barcelona is fully committed to carry on explaining and showing shelters, their history through, um, with the help of academics, of uh, memorial associations, but the city wants to be a facilitator and wants to um, make these spaces well known. Thanks very much to all the speakers, to all the attendees, and I hope to see you all on the 30th. Thank you very much.